Success Insight shares the stories of the people with passion and drive who make things happen in the world. Here's your host, Howard Fox. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Success Insight podcast. Our guest today is Barbara Ann Mojica. Barbara is a historian and retired educator. Her career spans more than 40 years serving as a teacher, special educator, principal, and school district administrator. Barbara is the creator and author of the Little Miss History book series. Little Miss History is a whimsical character Barbara uses to narrate her book series. Within this series, Barbara hopes to educate, entertain, and inspire children to learn about historical people and places. And joining Barbara today is her husband, Victor, who is the illustrator for the Little Miss History book series. Barbara Ann and Victor, welcome to the Success Insight Podcast. Thanks so much for inviting us. Nice to be here, Howard. Fantastic. So I hope you are having a fantastic day in upstate New York. I'm here in Chicago. We are still in the winter season. It's a little chilly out there, but hey, spring is right around the corner and hopefully good tidings for all of us. I would love if you could share a little bit, Barbara, some background, just to give our listeners a flavor for this, you know, the historical resonance of your career as an educator and, 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 you know, how you got into this idea of wanting to write these books. So take it away. Okay. Well, I spent the majority of my career working with children in elementary school. And while I did enjoy that, I didn't have too much opportunity to teach history at that point. My background in college, undergraduate and graduate, is in history. I love history, and I've always had a passion for it. So when I retired, basically, I was bored. That happens a lot if we're not prepared. So (laughs) I decided I'd like to combine my two passions. I love history. I love kids. I wanted to keep working with kids. And I became acutely aware of the fact that in our modern curriculum, especially here in the United States, history is pretty much ignored. On the elementary level, it's reading, writing, and math. So I decided I would like to get kids involved in history. And I was looking for a fun way of doing that. And I wasn't having too much success in deciding how I would be able to do that. My husband came up with the idea of creating a cartoon character to narrate the stories. And this character, Little Miss History, is a younger version of myself. I love to travel. I used to hike everywhere. So I wanted to kind of combine some things that were important to me in that character. So we came up with this character. Little Miss History looks kind of like a wannabe park ranger. She wears hiking boots that are way oversized. And that's kind of in memory of my father who had huge size, 13 feet. I was going to ask you where those boots came from because you can't miss them. And I used to love to hike. I used to hike all around the mountain ranges in this area and, you know, throughout New England. And I love to travel. And as a kid, I didn't do much traveling. My parents didn't have a lot of extra money for travel. So it was only after I started working that I began traveling and I traveled with a passion. I I visited more than half the states and I traveled all over Europe. Uh, I went to Russia. I went to China. I, you know, I I really kind of did it all. So I said, okay, so we'll use this character and I will focus on places that I think would be especially interested to children and their families. And I wanted to have the opportunity for them not only to learn about, but possibly even visit these places. I chose a lot of national parks and I tried to make it fairly diverse. So we started the book series, the first book focused on Mount Rushmore, and we combine multimedia. Uh, I mean, we take photographs, we use illustrations, there are portraits, there are photographs. We try to inject the humor into it. 
but we try to include a lot of aspects of history that are normally not covered. So all of my books include little known characters, people that were kind of left out or forgotten. And my idea is to get kids to have different areas of exploration. For instance, my Sequoia National Park book focuses a lot on science and the environment and the air pollution problems. Sequoia National Park is the most polluted national park, which very few people know, but the pollution is a big problem. So I bring to mind different things that kids could think about, and I ask them to come up with their own ideas. So that's really what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make them think. I'm trying to make them have fun. I'm trying to make the books multicultural. I'm trying to give them different areas of exploration and learning to make it a lot more interesting. Okay. Very good. And great broad stroke, can't you know, to kind of create the picture of what your vision for this, this, these books were. I'd love to circle back for a little bit. Something you said that t- in today's educational system, history is ignored. Like you, I, I loved history. And I think I, I, that is why I've always enjoyed travel as well. And I'm wondering why you think, what's your perspective on why history is ignored today? Well, because the focus is on the test. It's common core, the standards, the testing. And the testing focuses on reading, writing to a lesser extent, and math. But unfortunately, when they present the test to the children, the passages that they use in the reading very often focus on places and people that the children are not familiar with. And it's a bit ironic. If they would teach the history, the children would be a lot more familiar with the things that they're throwing at them because the children have no idea what these things are, what who these people are, what the places are connected to. It's all about the testing and the theory is that the other subjects can be introduced later. But I think that's a really too late because children, by the time they get to middle school and high school, they haven't developed a curiosity about people and places. And when I talk to young children and I visit schools, I try to tell them that history is not just a record of events. It's a story about people It's a story of who they are, what they did. And it's not just important people that have made a a huge mark on history, like Abraham Lincoln or George Washington, but it's also everyday people like they are. I mean, history is, is a story about people who get up and eat breakfast and go to work and go to school and make mistakes just like they are. And when they're born, they actually become a character in history. And children want to know, well, where did I come from? Were things always like this? And by understanding history, they're able to get a grasp on these things. So history gives them a grounding. And I tell them, okay, so you become a character in history. You know that there are people that have come before you. You know that there are people who will come after you. And they're, of course, curious about their own families, their own culture, their own traditions. But in in today's modern society, we don't have the time. We don't tell the stories. Families are very busy. They're not as connected as they used to be. I'm wondering too, if, you know, there's an old saying, it, without knowing our history, we're doomed to repeat it. And perhaps that's coming true. Who knows? Well, Barbara has a saying in, in that regard. Yeah, all that's, yeah, our, yeah, if you don't know your history, you don't know what you're talking about. Because not only by studying history, we can learn about mistakes of the past, but it also gives us hope for the future. Yeah, history is where the understanding lies. If you know the history, you'll understand why things are the way they are. Very much so, very much so. Victor, as Barbara was starting to 
express that I'm bored, you know, I need to do something. And this idea of the book was, let's say, a bit of a spark. And you had this idea yourself how she might fill her time in this creative way. What was your insight? I mean, this, this show is called Success Insight. So what was your insight on why these books and the way you've illustrated them, I think is very cute. I mean, I'm looking off camera here. There's a Little Miss History travels to Sequoia National Park, which, by the way, I would love. I've never seen a Sequoia. I would love to see it. And there she is standing right next to it. What went into visualizing the graphics for this book? What processes did you have to go through? And how did you work with Barbara on that process? Well, Barbara contributes the text. And I'm an, another, a children's book illustrator from way back. From I started illustrating children's books in the 70s. This was not your first rodeo then. That's correct. So when she retired and was wondering what she was going to do, I knew she loved history. She was, she's a historian. She's traveled. She writes well. I suggested to her, well, I'm a children's book illustrator. And if you wanted to stay with the children, let's write children's books. And I'll think of a character and we'll make it fun. And, you know, she bought into that concept. And then I spent a few weeks designing the character, which has changed a little bit, you know, over the years. I wanted the character to be very close to, to Barbara, to Barbara's countenance, without being a portrait. And, and I didn't want the character to be a character that didn't look capable of scaling the Statue of Liberty which she does in one of the books, and Sky Dives. So I, I gave her a tomboyish appearance and somewhere around 18. Uh, so it should be legal to do all these things. But the pictures, we wanted to show as, as much as we could actual photographs of the sites. If, if I would have illustrated these sites, then people would have said, oh, it's not that nice, or it's not really that spectacular. So I felt I had to show the pictures. And it's fun integrating the Little Miss History character into some of these pictures, which I do. Very cool. Now, when you were creating these books, Barbara, Victor, did you go out to, for example, the La Brea Tar Pits? Did you go out to Tombstone, Arizona? Yes. Yes. Take, and you took the picture. So you actually went on some uh, little trips yourselves. Right. Uh, 98% of the pictures we've taken ourselves. In the first book, we never went to Mount Rushmore. So that book is completely illustrated. Have you been to Mount Rushmore since then? No, but we're planning to. Yeah, I mean, there's got to be at least a second edition to this book, I, right. I would imagine. Right. And the character has changed quite a bit since that first book. So. And we haven't been to the North Pole, so that, right. <laughs> that one. That one's illustrated also. Very cool. What has been the reaction to these books in the educational space, in the history buff space, perhaps even the, the parent-child space? What are they saying about the books? Well, we had an experience over at Temple Hill. We, we do a reading there every year. And uh, where, where was that? Uh, in uh, Newburgh, Newburgh, New York. Newburgh, Newburgh, New York. We had all our books with us uh, th this last visit. And we were with the middle grade school kids, and I wanted to see really firsthand what they would do once they had the books in their hands. You know, how would they look at them? How would they turn the pages? So I scattered the books throughout the classroom in the last 10 minutes of the class. And from their reaction, I couldn't understand why the books, why we're not millionaires yet, <laughs> because they loved them. And they started asking questions. Oh, what's this? What's that? What happened here? What happened there? We had to literally rip the books out uh, from their hands when we left. We were on a schedule. What time? Yeah, they we were really the next holding on to these books. And every one of the kids, every one of them opened the book and started reading them. So I, I really don't understand wh why they're not more popular. The education, as far as the educational system itself, we are in some schools. Of, and in some stores, uh, regularly. Like the books are on site at the Statue of Liberty. Some of them are in bookstores around, they're going out to Tombstone. FDR, Hyde Park. Uh, FDR is the Hyde Park. But some homeschooling parents like to use them. 
We did have a request. One of our, uh, we took the three New York City books of Ellis Island, Intrepid Sierra and Space Museum, and Statue. We went there too, <laughs> and we put, we put them into one book because I got a lot of requests from the New York teachers to put the three New York City sites together because the fourth grade they teach local history. So uh, the same thing with Hyde Park. With Hyde Park, the kids in the Dutchess County area also study local history. So uh, that book is used a lot by fourth grade. The actual reading level of the books, because they're so visual, young kids really like them. So I, I get a great response from kids as young as kindergarten. And adults, they, when, they're, when they look at the books, they say, oh, gee, I didn't know that. <laughs> but the uh, the actual reading level is hits more around middle grade grades four to six is the average independent reading level. But uh, again, they they're very popular with all ages. Parents, they, oh yeah, 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 you know, and, and grandparents they they have a pretty diverse range of audiences. But I would say the K to six is is the main target audience. I love the fact that there's a coloring book here as well. Yeah, that, that's our first one. We tried to make it something that a child wouldn't take off uh, and be by themselves with it. And maybe the, the parents would want to sit with them. We put phrases in, in each in each page alongside yeah, we'll a coloring page. From, uh, some of them are from... To kind of encourage the, the parents. The books and to, others are from other... other uh, characters of, of history, but there's also a little activity page at the end. And the, the, the pictures are, are not just outline, regular coloring sheets. They're more detailed. So if you- They help use, with the coloring. Yeah, if you use the uh, penciling, you could come out with a pretty good professional looking portrait, you know, so even adults. The great coloring. texture under the- uh, on, that the pictures are made of uh, help with the, I think, the coloring. And if you cut, if you're a, a serious colorist, it would look pretty close to the uh, original. The pages were taken from the the actual books. Very cool. We had a a, a guest on last year, and I I can I can picture her, but I can't remember her name for the life of me. She created coloring books. And a lot of them were, you know, flowers, animals, things like that, and abstract designs. But, I mean, the power of coloring, just to take pencils, pens, and just color, it's very therapeutic. It's, you know, it's creative. And I, I love the fact. And, and by the way, in the spirit of full disclosure, I have only been to the Statue of Liberty in this whole series. Like, I want to <laughs> go to Mount Rushmore. I want to. I'm moving to Las Vegas, so okay. Where can? How far away is the La Brea Tar Pits? You know, in in Arizona. But uh, so, where will you two go next? Uh, beside, you're going to Mount Rushmore, so you're going to probably have a second edition to the book because now you'll have the picture. Where else would you like to go to add to this library of Little Miss history books? Well, her next trip is Philadelphia, which, which we vacationed there uh, we've last We've already done. Summer. Her, um, the research that one is pretty much finished. Is it the Liberty Bell? Uh, well, it's right. going to be Independence Hall and the Museum of the American Revolution. It will be a combination. Okay, that was really the the trip itself. I mean, uh, if if you're an American, you need to go to Philadelphia to Liberty Hall. You need to go there. Right. You know that's where the country was born. And our country is so unique. Yes. There's no other democracy like ours. It was completely invented by these men. It, it, just the story is just incredible. It really is. And just to be there to see where they, where they argued and, and designed and invented our Constitution and, and the Bill of Rights is just incredible. Just incredible. And they, they just opened up with a museum, the Revolutionary Museum, which is not far from Liberty Hall. And that was really That strange. was amazing, too. Yeah, that's great. I mean, it's, talk about hands-on. If children go to visit that, they can actually see the guns. They can listen to the people. 
they have uh, movies, they have dioramas, they have sculptures, uh, and they have actual photographs of people who were alive during the revolutionary period. So it, it's really an amazing experience. You really need to have that in combination with, you know, with visiting independent school. And, and you, know, I, you know, I remember as a kid or not a kid, I was, I was probably, I was in my probably forties going to Philadelphia for the first time and, vi- and visiting independence hall and the bell Liberty bell. And I just remember just the shivers, like, oh my God, this is this is history at its finest. So you've got Philadelphia. Where, where else is on the horizon for you too? Well, there are a couple of trips that we've already taken. I'm not sure the exact order that they're going to come out in. Death Valley, we've gone there and I've got a, a preliminary script for that. We went oh. to the USS Iowa. And we're planning a trip to Monticello, Thomas Jefferson's house. I'd, I'd like to cover that one. Very cool. So I'm curious, with the two of you working together, I mean, obviously you're married, been together for quite a while. What was it like to collaborate with each other? Oh, it's great. It's easy. It's a lot easier when you're with a traditional uh, book publishing company or even a hybrid publishing company. You get assigned an artist most of the time and you might get a couple of shots at corrections but you're not going to get exactly what you want and if you get along which we do you can't beat the combination you know because she writes then she gives me the manuscript and i'm right there right opposite her and i start designing the book and we go back and forth what do you think about this? You, I ask that she maybe edit some of the text to help the illustration be more clear. We just go back and forth. It's, it's like a, a hand in a glove. The process with a children's book is always, it always involves lots of editing because you, people think, well, the book doesn't have to be that long, so it shouldn't take that long to write it. But what has to happen is that not only do you have to have the research done, the facts right, uh, you have to boil it down to a manageable size. And children's books are generally between what the, my books all hit between 500 and 750 words. So you, I generally will edit a script 10 to 12 times before it's even ready to think about illustration. And then when it goes to illustration, well, Victor first, he does thumbnails, just very rough sketches and to do a preliminary layout as to what would go with each page. And then as he said, sometimes we find that something just doesn't work. Like he has a vision of creating a sequence of illustrations that make certain points. And the text, may not exactly fit that. So then sometimes... It could be too much text. Sometimes there's another edit at the last minute in order to make the text completely flow with the illustration. You know, I I try to marry the text, the amount of text, the picture, and what Little Miss History is doing. And all that has to work. It's interesting because I've heard this repeatedly. That is so important that... You know, the because I mean, most of these books, most of the children's books that I've seen are right around the 40 page mark ish. And just the being able to match the, the illustration to the words that are there. I'm, it's interesting because I'm, I was going back to see how long your books were as we're chatting. And I, I, the one I pulled up, it's one of your longer books. It's the hundred and some page book, The Adventures of Little Miss History, Volume One. Uh, adventure books for all ages. Is that like a compilation or? Well, that's the three New York City books. That's Uh, the one that I put together mostly for teachers. Gotcha. So it's really three books in in one. You know, one, uh, an interesting thing came to my mind just a few days ago, which was completely unintentional. But because of Little Miss History's interactions in the pictures, she makes the facts 
that Barbara writes about much more memorable. And I'll give an example. In the FDR book, Barbara writes that in the foyer of the main house, there's a series of political cartoons dealing with Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And to show the picture, to, to show the cartoons on the walls, you wouldn't necessarily remember that it's in the foyer or that there's even cartoon pictures in the foyer. But I put Little Miss History taking one of those frames off the wall and you could see the nails still on the wall and she's holding one of the pictures. And I thought to myself, if I saw that picture, I would never forget that there's cartoon drawings of FDR in the foyer of the Bain House. Also, the fact that uh, in the uh, Statue of Liberty book, she's scaling the, the statue and she shows you the chains at the feet of the statue, the broken chains. No one would ever forget that. And she's climbing up to the plaque that uh, Little Miss, that the Statue of Liberty Mm -hmm. is holding, the keystone with the words uh, inscribed on them. You'd never forget what that inscription is. So those things, uh, every time you see Little Miss history injected in these pictures, it really makes you remember. I mean, I think the illustrations are fantastic. And to our listeners, you know, as we're up chatting with uh, Barbara and Victor, I've got uh, Amazon page opened up and I'm just kind of scrolling through. In fact, Little Miss Histories travels to uh, the Statue of Liberty is actually the one that's up right now. As you were talking about, like, oh, I'd like to see that. Uh, This is just like fascinating. I mean, as a, as someone who grew up enjoying history, I mean, I, I, uh, I still get to to learn a little bit about history, a lot about history, actually, now that I think about it, just given the nature of the podcast and who we have interviewed. So this is a, such a pleasure, and it's, and it's definitely a genre of books for children, kids. It's travel, it's history, it, it's some fant- the illustrations are phenomenal. And so this the work that you two have done together is just, it, it's amazing. And, you know, we'll do whatever we can to help you know, promote your books. Uh, before we uh, head out, Victor, I just wanted to give a little shout out to you. Tell us a little bit about your work. And I know you've got the Eugenus, Eugen- is that how you pronounce it? Your- Eugenus. Eugenus. Uh, tell us a little bit more about your work and what you're doing. Well, I we're publishing uh, two other titles, uh, Captain Crossbones and Eugenus. Captain Crossbones is a series of comic strips but I, I wrote and illustrated a children's book, a self-esteem children's book, with the pirate character, Captain Crossbones. That, that in itself is interesting because one would think, well, how do you create self-esteem in a child reading a pirate book? That's a trick, but you have to read the book. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the eugenics is science fiction, uh, but it's my religion. Uh, it's, it's what I believe about mankind. You know, I, I believe we're good. I don't believe we're a mistake. Uh, I don't like to hear when people say, uh, oh, I made a mistake. I'm only human, you know, uh, and, and, and the other phrase that I don't like to err is human. Uh, I believe that if you think about, for example, in a nutshell, if you think about what we did by landing on the moon, we took an idea that we didn't have rocket ships that could get there. We didn't have the fuel, the knowledge. We didn't have the computers. We didn't have the astronauts. And we had no idea how we were going to go there. And in, in less than 10 years, in less than 10 years, we achieved all of that and landed on the moon. I mean, to me, it, it says that whatever we do together collectively, there's nothing we can't do. There's nothing human beings can, cannot achieve if we work together. There, there isn't any. Oh, well said. Uh, there's a phrase, I think it's inscribed in the uh, United Nations building uh, that says, what the mind can conceive, man can achieve. Mm-hmm. And I really believe that. And eugenics is, is about that. You know, uh, That's what the name eugenics means, of good race. You know, I try to make the stories about human nature, uh, no matter how 
uh, uh, successful we are, we're always going to have to deal with our human nature, which is very complex. And fortunately, it, it, that's what makes us so adaptable, that we are so complicated. If we were, if we were a simple organism, we'd, we'd perish. We've, we've got some little adapting to do right now, I think. Uh, Bar- thank you for sharing that, Victor. And Barbara, before again, before we head out of here, you know, I, I did want to acknowledge your books have uh, garnered quite a few awards. Tell us a, a little bit about them. They received the Bragg Medallion, which is a book readers group. They have many readers from across different spectrums, and about 20% of the books that are submitted get accepted for the Bragg Medallion. A couple of my books have won Book of the Year in nonfiction for children, the, the Ford's Theater book, um, and they, they've won Book Excellence Awards, the Mount Vernon book, and the La Brea Tar Pits, and the Ford's Theater again. And they've done well. Readers' Favorite Awards. Uh, so... They receive pretty good reviews from not only the general reading public, but people across the the spectrum. So uh, I'm really, really happy with that. The critics have loved that North Pole book. That's received the most awards, right? Yeah, that received four. Wow. Fantastic. Fantastic. Now, Barbara, you're also doing some other kinds of writing. I saw that you are... Uh, contributing writer to the the Columbia Insider. Tell us a little bit more about that. Right. This is a local uh, news magazine. And I do a historical set of uh, articles. Not They're not history per se, but what I do is the magazine has a theme every month. Whatever the theme is, I find something interesting in history to relate it to. And that could be pretty diverse. And some of the themes are a little bit difficult to work with, like she spring, means the theme of the the magazine of that issue uh, that month. Spring is coming. So this this month I'm I'm writing uh about bird migration and everything green and one issue uh, I wrote about all kinds of things that are green and their history, like the green back. So uh, I, again, I look for people and places and interesting angles to history. Well, there, the magazine is, is for anyone, basically adults, but it's distributed throughout the local community. So again, my writing, I, I tend to always hit that kind of middle grade level. Of course, these are, these are articles without pictures. So they're roughly this, they're roughly the length of one of my books, maybe a little bit shorter. But I've been doing that for seven years now. And uh, Victor also does a cartoon strip for the same right, That's why I magazine. do, uh, I publish Captain Crossbones in that magazine. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, I am definitely going to have to learn more uh, about that as well. And, and I mean, the, the books are amazing again. And uh, trying to figure out which book I would uh, pick up because, I mean, the, the North Pole, I did come close to the North Pole. I was across the Arctic Circle. I think that, I think that counts, though I was probably a thousand miles short. Well, that's short. pretty close. <laughs> Most people don't make it all yeah. the way up there. <laughs> we give a little history of Santa Claus, too, in that book. Very good. Very good. Well, listen, if our listeners would like to learn more about you and your work, Barbara, where's the best place for them to go? Okay, the website is littlemisshistory.com, not surprisingly. They can contact me directly at email, barbara at littlemisshistory.com. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. There's a Little Miss History page on Facebook. I'm on Twitter, Pinterest, and YouTube. I've recently started a YouTube channel. Uh, So on my YouTube channel, I have some videos about history. I have some book trailers of the books, some interviews that I've done. Uh, And I also include some videos of national park sites that I talk about in my book. And recently, I've also done some work with authors. Um, I've done a few videos on tips and advice to authors uh, who are interested in publishing. And I have some of those on my YouTube channel as well. Fantastic. You know who I need to introduce you to is Eleanor DeWire. 
Eleanor was on my podcast early in the year. Uh, if you go out to successinsidepodcast.com, you'll see her. Eleanor is an expert in lighthouses. Oh, wow. I, I think Little Miss History needs to go to visit a lighthouse. <laughs> we were you married could, in a lighthouse. Yeah, that's really? know, kind of ironic, right? I think that's incredibly ironic. You know, the Hudson Athens lighthouse? Okay. No. Yeah. Well, it's we were married there. Wow. I, I, I'm going to make an introduction to for both of you. I think you could collaborate on a book or get – or. Definitely the the lighthouse, though they are global in nature, they're all over the world. But here in the United States, there's an iconic nature to them. You know, there's 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 mystery, there's intrigue. It's Mother Nature at its best. Lots of worst. ghosts. <laughs> lots of ghosts. Lots of ghost stories. Uh, I think that would be pretty darn cool. So I will. Uh, I'm going to make an introduction for you, but I think that's that would be pretty Thank you. cool. Appreciate that. Look forward to it. Yeah, and one other one. Uh, Dan Pegram was an author last year, Pop-Up Airplane, How Do You Fly? His nephew did the illustrations for his book, but Dan was an ex-Air Force pilot. I think it was a a C-35. It was was one of the refueling tankers, but he was also retired from Southwest Airlines as a pilot. So Little Miss History rides in an airplane. So I'm thinking there's a lot of collaboration going on here. (laughs) So I I tell you, my, I did a, uh, a personality assessment the other day, you know, at at a a project that I I'm working on. And one of the, the descriptors was a connector. So that's, this is how, this is what I like and love about the podcast is just making those connections. Well, listen, we will definitely provide the links back to the Little Miss History website and to your uh, your social sites like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, et cetera, YouTube. Uh, Victor, if our listeners would like to learn more about you and your work, where should they go? Eugenius Studios, E-U-G-E-N-U-S dot com. Excellent. So we'll provide a, a backlink to that on our website as well. Thank you both for joining uh, us on the Success Inside podcast today. I mean, the phenomenal work. These illustrations are fantastic. And the fact that, you know, marriage, you know, many years, and the fact that you have collaborated together to produce uh, some wonderful works of literature for children, some wonderful works of art, and you're still doing it. And I, I love it. And I love, to, we'll look forward to seeing some of your future projects and learning more about you know, the work you guys are doing. So thanks for joining us. Thank you so much, Howard. Thank you so much, Howard. All right, folks, we have just been chatting with Barbara Ann Mojica with her husband, Victor. Barbara Ann is the author and creator of the Little Miss History book series, and Victor is the illustrator. Do go out to their website, littlemisshistory.com, and you can visit Victor's website, eugenist.com, and to learn more about his work. Uh, We'll also provide all the social links back on our show notes as well. I mean, folks, if if you're... We're going out to Amazon and looking at these books, Little Miss History Travels to, and then all these various sites that Barbara and Victor have visited to provide the basis for each one of these books. It's amazing stuff. These illustrations are phenomenal. And again, I'm looking at Little Miss History climbing the uh, uh, Statue of Liberty right now. And that's that's the one that kind of is intriguing me. But I definitely uh, go out there, pick up a book, Read it with your child, read it with your spouse for that matter, but do pick up a book and learn a little bit more about our history here in the U.S. And it's, uh, as Victor was saying, humans are an amazing species and, you know, we've got, we've got a lot going for us and we've got, we have our issues, but we also have our potential as well. And heck, if we can get our kids to want to take the time to go out there and to read a little bit more, to learn a little bit more about history. And I think that they're going to be better for it. And so will their parents as well. So listen, I uh, hope you enjoyed today's podcast. If you uh, would like to learn more about our work, you can visit us on successinsightpodcast.com. You can also go out and visit us on all of the social sites on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, as well as Pinterest for our children's book authors. So Barbara's books, uh, we'll have a link to her books 
on Pinterest as well. So as well as YouTube. So folks, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, go out there, have a phenomenal day. And we'll see you on the next episode of the Success Insight Podcast. Take care now. Success Insight is a production of Fox Coaching and First Story Strategies. Find us online, successinsightpodcast.com.